As usual, Matthew's gospel is not what it might first appear. It's not really about gadding all you can. It's really much deeper than that. And I would suggest something much more, at least in of the two lessons I'm going to propose. The first comes to begin with a story. The story is about a class reunion from high school. It's a small eastern high school run by religious communities of brother. And it is their 25th anniversary of graduation from high school. So the former headmaster, the brother, now retired, is there to see some of his former students, many of whom he has never seen since graduation. So they gather, and of course he is eager to see them. It is the first night of a weekend reunion when only those who graduated would be gathering. So they're around the table waiting for the food to be served. And without any prompting, they begin to pour out to their former headmaster all that they have done with their lives. One had become very successful in his particular business. He was a printer and he had had three shops now that he opened. Another one had become a paramedic and he had done great things and was doing good work for the local area there of being a paramedic on their first responder team. Another one had become a teacher in the local school and was very happy with it. Another, a professor in the small community college just in another town over. The headmaster had listened to all their accomplishments without much comment or prodding at all. And then when they were all done and before the meal was really served, he looked at them and he said, I'm very happy you've used your education well, that you've taken what we have given you and you have employed it and and put it to good use. And then he asked them something very different. He said, but what kind of people have you become? What have you made of yourself, he said. Well, that's a very different question, isn't it? A very different purpose. What have you made of yourself? They grew silent, for they knew from their headmaster he was asking something far more profound. What have you made of yourself? Not the accolades you've gotten, not the money you make, or even the titles you have earned. What have you made of yourself? He is asking them simply, what of the relationships you have formed? What equality are they? What about the love you have engendered and bestowed on others? Was it good and noteworthy? What about the kind of example you are setting for others? What kind of person have you become? I think often in our pursuit of a career, in our following after certain achievements or levels of accomplishment, we have spent a lot more time on the doing and not very much time on the becoming. That's what he was asking them. And I think that's really the gospel. What have you done to become what you should be in your life? Whether you had five, ten, or two talents is irrelevant. What have you become about what God has asked you to be? Are you the person God expected you to be? Have you become the one God called you to be? That's what he's really saying in this gospel to me. What kind of person have you become? We know in our world sometimes it does not always value what we do as Christians. So character, decency, virtue, honesty, they matter. They make a difference. What kind of person have you become? Are those marks of your life? Are those qualities people would describe in you? What kind of person have you become? It's really about the goodness we have fashioned. Have you noticed the first reading? It goes with this. It's the book of Proverbs. Here is a woman. She is praised throughout that whole lengthy passage. She is praised not for her accomplishments, although they are indeed good. She's praised for the woman she has become. It says she is praised she's because she is a good mother. She is a devoted wife. She is a good friend. And she is someone who takes care of the needy. She is praised for the kind of person she has become. She is praised because she gives good counsel and wise 
advice to those who need it. She is praised because she even takes food from her table to share with those who have no food on their own. That's what this gospel would ask us. What kind of person have you and I become? And I would put a corollary to that. And how are you helping other people be the kind of persons they can become? That's the challenge, I think, the first one of this gospel. What kind of person have you become? And are you helping others become the kind of people they should become? And then there seems to be a a second part of it. It, There's not much at first reading in that gospel good news, was there? I mean, you had a harsh judge, uh, the master, a harsh ruler, the one who gives the talents. And then you have um, a simple one who has one talent, and it seems he does nothing really wrong, and he loses the talent. He doesn't even have that. Now he's even further behind than he was before. He's even more behind the eight ball than ever. What is the good news? Where where would you find it in Matthew? What would you tell me is the good news about this? And I'm going to suggest two. The first is that all three have talents. All three have something. So that's the good news. Everybody gets talents. Everybody has gifts. Everybody has a calling. Everybody has a purpose. That is the first thing. And the second thing is even the smallest is of value. Even the least has worth. Even the littlest will contribute to something. Those are the two messages I think we need to hear because there are some among us who don't feel they have any talents. They have very few gifts to share. There's not much about them to be praiseworthy, not anything about them that others would find of value or could use. They don't see that first part, that what they have is gift, that God has bestowed upon them something that they are not without anything. So maybe that tonight it's a search to find that in your life, to recognize that in your living, that you have a gift, that you are gifted, and that God has a plan for you, a purpose for you. Everyone in the gospel receives a gift, and it's a gift that they might accomplish what he asks of them. No one is without gifts. No one without a purpose or a mission. That's important. Maybe some of us have to discover that. Some of us have to sit with that and realize it. We even have to name and know the gifts. And then the second thing is that even the least of the gifts need to be expressed, given, offered, shown, for they have purpose. You know, if I were to ask some who do understand their gifts, they might be able to name it rather quickly, and maybe more than one. The first one that comes to mind, maybe they might say, well, I'm a good cook. I'm really a good organizer. I'm a very good athlete. They can know their gifts or talents. I'm wise in this area. I have learned much in this part of my field. So that is good news. But what about the one you wouldn't think of? And that's where I think of the least. What about the one that maybe doesn't come up to the first. It doesn't seem to have as much prominence. Maybe it is the simple gift of hospitality. I can make feel, people feel comfortable. They come into my home. They come into my presence. They feel comfortable to talk to me, to say things to me, and they even acknowledge, I always feel good after talking to you. Maybe some of you have the gift of being a peacemaker, a reconciler. I can bring together parties that are at odds. I can use words that kind of join them together. It's not much of a gift, I don't think, but it is. And maybe some of you have the ability to lift the spirits, have words of encouragement, hopefulness, joy to those who are bent over and bent down with discouragement and depression. You see, those gifts, you may not see them as great gifts, but they are the little gifts, they are the important gifts, they are the ones you and I are meant to use. And that is a second lesson for me, that everybody has a gift, and even the least of those are necessary, even the least of those are worthy, even the least of those need to be offered. 
So look again at the words of Matthew. It is not what you might first think. He poses the question, like that brother and that headmaster, what have you done in terms